What if I told you that the Earth's population before Noah's flood could have surpassed the population of today's world? Would you be skeptical? I mean, you have to be skeptical, right? There are so many people on the Earth today. There are billions of people. There could not have been more people alive before the flood than today, right? This is the Bible Sojourner. The first pages of the Bible tell of when God created the world. It was, in simple terms, paradise. No sin, no thorns, no thistles, and most importantly, no death. Unfortunately, paradise did not last long. Because of Adam and Eve's sin against God, all of creation suffered under a curse. Life changed dramatically because of sin. Because of the fall of Adam and Eve, the world looks much different today than it did when God created the world. However, there was another event that drastically changed the world. Although God created the world as paradise, there are many places today that don't look very paradise-like. Something catastrophic happened. Because of the sinfulness of humanity, God sent a global flood as judgment. It's difficult to understate how significant this flood was in reshaping the world. It rearranged geography, temperature, climate, and usable landmass. The surface of the earth was once paradise, but now 70% would be uninhabitable, covered with water. When thinking about life before the flood, there are many questions that come up. Why did people live so long? What was the weather like? But the question we want to talk about today is, how many people lived on the earth before the flood? Although the Bible doesn't tell us explicitly, it gives us enough information that we can read between the lines and make an educated guess about pre-flood populations. But to do that, we need to have our Bibles in one hand and our calculators in another. It's time to go to school. According to the Bible, humanity originated from Adam and Eve, the first two human beings on earth. From their lineage came many sons and daughters, including some of whom are named and well-known, like Cain, Abel, and Seth. As generations passed, humanity prospered and the earth's population grew. Using the genealogy of Genesis 5, we can calculate the time from creation to the flood. We can go all the way from Adam to Noah when the flood takes place and we get 1,656 years. Now, some people say that there may have been small gaps in this genealogy, and that may be true, but regardless, that still gives us a bare minimum of 1,656 years between creation and the flood. Now that we have a concrete number of years to work with, let's explore the different population growth scenarios to estimate the numbers. Now, before you get bored, because I know you will, or you curse the fact that this feels like math class, let me assure you, these are relatively straightforward calculations, and I'm gonna do them for you anyway, so it's not like you have to do this. But I want you to know what I'm doing. Now, in order to figure out the population of the world before the flood, we have to estimate how fast a population could grow per year. This is called the population growth rate. This is a very common statistic, so if you just search for this, you can verify what I'm talking about. Now, if we use what people would consider a conservative population growth rate, like that of modern times, we could use a number like 1.13% per year. And if we multiply that over the 1,656 years, the time from creation to the flood, we get 241 million people at the time of Noah's flood. Now that's a lot, but, we need to remember that conditions on Earth were presumably quite favorable before the flood. Plus, people had extended lifespans and were able to have children longer into adulthood. Methuselah, for example, lived to be 969 years old and was said to have multiple children during that time span. Of course, it is possible that humans had a lower fertility rate during the pre-flood world, but there's nothing that would directly indicate that to us in the Bible. So when we consider the favorable conditions of a pre-flood life, it's at the very least reasonable to assume a higher population growth rate than we would see today. Let's take our numbers from the previous scenario and increase the population growth from 1.13% to something small like 1.3%, just a slight increase. But at a 1.3% growth rate, the pre-flood population could have been around 3.9 billion people. 
which is actually quite a significant increase from the previous estimate. Now let's put this in perspective and take a look at some of the other examples in the Bible of extreme growth rates. One of the best examples of a much higher growth rate is Israel in Egypt. Now when Israel goes down to Egypt, they spend 400 years there and Genesis 46 says they started as 70 people. But by the time they left Egypt, their numbers soared to around 2 million. This population growth indicates a 2.6% growth rate per year. Now remember our previous examples were only 1.13% and 1.3%. But in Egypt, Israel had a 2.6% growth rate. Now if we apply the same growth rate to the pre-flood world, the numbers really become astronomical. And since I'm not great at math, let's consider again a more conservative growth rate for the pre-flood world, say around 1.5% per year. Although a full percentage point lower than the growth rate that Israel experienced while in Egypt, this growth rate still leads us to an astonishing estimate of 102 billion people at the time of the flood. Now that's a lot of people. But does this mean that there were 102 billion people alive during the time of the flood? We need to remember that this was a time that was marked by evil. There was violence, there was war, murder, all this took place in the pre-flood society and could have impacted or slowed the population growth significantly. Although disease may not have been as great of an issue as we see today in our world, it's also possible that disease had an effect in the pre-flood world as well. It's also possible, like I mentioned, that women did not become pregnant as often as in modern day. Yet, despite all these qualifications, the pre-flood population was still likely a very large number. So you might say to yourself, well, what number are we actually looking at here then? I might make you a little upset at this because the exact number is uncertain. There's not enough evidence. We've talked about it and it's reasonable to believe that Earth's pre-flood population was substantial, potentially even surpassing our current population. But we can't be dogmatic about it. We can't say for sure what it would be. All we know is that humans in the pre-flood world lived in ideal conditions. They grew food, they farmed. Additionally, the longevity of pre-flood life would seem to contribute to faster population growth rates. There's really no reason to think that Noah and his family escaped while a couple hundred or a couple thousand peasants drowned outside. There's actually every reason to believe that the flood brought terrible devastation on a heavily populated planet. What do you think? Could the population of the world before the flood have been greater than our modern world? Let me know what you think by dropping a comment. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you.